watching FinTech Wave. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ken from FinTech Wave. I hope you're well. I'm back with another video. And this is part one of a two-part series where I'm going to talk about two altcoin gems that could potentially bring back huge returns on investment, especially right now with the market depressed. The first one I'd like to talk about is everybody's favorite, XRP. And let's have a round of applause for XRP. Why not? You know, has weathered a huge storm up until the present. Shout to the XRP army. Most of us who know what time it is are big XRP fans. Ripple is the company behind XRP. XRP is the utility token for the Ripple product on-demand liquidity, which is the main product. Ripple is a company that was basically designed to solve the cross-border payments problem. The main focus of what Ripple does is solving this problem of cross-border payments, and they solve a real problem, and XRP is the token that is the utility device in that operation. So just to sum up briefly, up until recently, the way international payments were settled was big banks used to have accounts in different countries. They were called Nostro and Vostro accounts from Latin, ours and yours. And they would have to have big hunks of cash, billions of dollars tied up in the major markets. So that would really cut back on efficiencies where cash flows were concerned. And this tie up of cash is what would take three, four, five days for some of these transactions to settle because they would have to first, if you wanted to send money from say the United States to Japan, first the bank would have to look at the Nostro account in Japan and see if the money was there. And <laughs> these Nostro and Vostro accounts would have to be verified. So what Ripple's product does is it takes that time intensive, inefficient process where cash is normally tied up and makes it liquid, frictionless, and very, very cheap. So instead of taking three days, transactions typically settle in four seconds. And that's the problem Ripple has solved. And if you look at their website, discover why hundreds of financial institutions choose RippleNet to provide a better payments experience and enable greater economic opportunity for everyone, everywhere. RippleNet, a new era of finance. RippleNet makes it easier than it's ever been to run a high performance payments business. With the most advanced blockchain technology for global payments, financial institutions are able to expand into new markets around the world and even eliminate pre-funding, those Nostro and Vostro accounts I was talking about, by leveraging the power of XRP through RippleNet's on-demand liquidity service. Together with our customers, we are building a more inclusive financial system where more people and SMEs, small to medium-sized enterprises, have access to better financial services. So Ripple was all about solving a problem from the beginning, and they did so in a big way. They've signed on some of the biggest players in the finance game all around the world. And the only place that Ripple is having issues is in the United States. And most of my videos where XRP comes up, I touch on the reason that that is, and that's because the big financial players in the United States, they see that Ripple is going to change the paradigm drastically and cut into the money that they're making. And, you know, greed being what it is, the basis of capitalism, it seems to me that these big players in the space do not want to let Ripple get too far along until they can figure out how to protect themselves from this cataclysm that's coming their way in terms of this whole paradigm shift that's going to take place in fintech and cross-border payments largely due to Ripple. And while they have Ripple tied up in litigation with the SEC on the one hand, and Ripple is sitting at, you know, what, around a dollar, especially because of the financial pullback lately in the crypto markets, which is also due to, in my view, manipulation, because again, the power elite see what's happening with cryptocurrency and they don't want it to get too far along. They don't want it to reach too much of a critical mass until they can get themselves set up properly to be able to capitalize and maximize and dominate cryptocurrency the same way that they've been dominating finance all along. And a perfect example of that is JP Morgan out in Southeast Asia doing exactly what Ripple set up to do. Even the artwork hopping from one node to the next type of artwork is just like Ripple's marketing campaign. It's ridiculous. So it's like a Cinderella story. You know, 
Cinderella, the wicked stepmother and the ugly sisters knew that Cinderella was the pretty one. She was the one with the attributes, right? And they were jealous. So human nature being what it is, they gave her a hard way to go. But in the end, what happened? The truth shined. And the truth is always going to shine. The cream is always going to rise to the top. And everybody knows XRP is going to win. XRP solves a real significant problem to the point where huge players in the space are mimicking what XRP has created. That should tell you everything you need to know. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, if you just want to look at it that way. When you have JP Morgan out in Southeast Asia mimicking point by point exactly what you set up, that tells me everything. And then lastly, I'd just like to mention two of the new additions to the XRP team. Ripple recently added Rosie Rios, who was the 43rd treasurer of the United States. That should tell you that there's a good possibility that XRP may be involved in the whole CBDC thing. France is looking at XRP as the basis for its central bank digital currency. That was a piece of big news lately. So the platform that is XRP, that is on-demand liquidity, is so powerful and so efficient. This platform is so deep that Flare Networks, this huge DeFi platform that's about to launch, is based 50% on the XRP ledger and 50% on the Ethereum virtual machine. There's a lot going on with XRP right now, and it's only a dollar. All right. They recently added Rosie Rios to the board of directors. And along with Rosie Rios, they added another person, Christina Campbell, as chief financial officer. Christina Campbell, just to check her pedigree, I went on her LinkedIn account. She was chief financial officer for a company, Pay Near Me. That was her last post. She is an MBA from Harvard and a Stanford grad with lots of experience in fintech relevant experience. And Brad Garlinghouse says, these two exceptional leaders joined Ripple at a pivotal time for our company. Rosie's experience in the public and private sectors provides an invaluable perspective to Ripple, especially during this time as the industry works to define crypto's future. As well, adding Christina's extensive knowledge and success building teams and processes at rapidly accelerating businesses was a no-brainer. We are extremely fortunate to have them on the team as we continue our rapid international growth and to champion for regulatory clarity in the U.S. Again, just to reiterate, the 43rd treasurer of the United States, whose name is on currencies, is now on Ripple's board of directors. You know, I'm one of these people that believes XRP is going to be the bridge currency for the world. And I have a feeling that sometime in the future, hopefully in the next three to five years, it could wind up in the five figures in terms of what each token is worth. I'm hoping for $10,000. I think certainly within 10 years, that's going to happen. I'm hoping it happens sooner. But people are saying that when this case closes, XRP could like rocket to $1,000 in, I don't know, a year, 18 months, maybe less. I'm going to just put a conservative estimate on it and say 12 months to 18 months. XRP could be a thousand bucks, a token, and it's sitting at one dollar right now. So you decide without me going too much further, because I could talk about XRP for 20 minutes. I just believe in this coin. I've been with XRP for years now when it was as low as 10, 11 cents through the crypto winter. And now, you know, the sun is starting to come out for XRP just as the last dirty trick. They figured they would hamstring XRP with an SEC case. And I believe that it's more about slowing XRP's progress while they can make moves to protect themselves from what Ripple and XRP and on-demand liquidity are going to do to the financial sector. It's more about that than whether or not XRP was breaking any SEC rules. Honestly, that's what I believe. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's about money, right? And if there's money at stake, follow the money and it'll always bring you to the truth of what's going on. So if you ask me, I have a strong buy on XRP at the range it's trading at right now. Even if it goes to two bucks, jump in while you can. Again, that's not financial advice. That's just what I feel. Anybody who is looking to get into crypto at a coin that you could take $1,000 and get a lot more tokens for your money than you could with other far more expensive coins, XRP is something that you might want to look at. Again, that's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just what I feel, so I figured I would share that information with you. That concludes part one of this two-part series called Altcoin Gems, where I talk about a couple of altcoins that I think are seriously undervalued that you might want to take a look at. The first one is XRP, and the second one I will reveal when I release part two in a week. All right, I'm going to leave it right there. I'll catch you guys on the next video.
This is Ken from Fintech Wave. Thanks for checking out this latest episode. If you like the content, please hit like and subscribe. Shout out to all the people who've subscribed already. I'm going to try to keep the quality content coming on Fintech. I appreciate you. And there's a link in the description. The Fintech Wave theme is now an NFT. See you next time, everybody. Take care.